Welcome to the Healing Scriptures. I have put these scriptures together because they are the Word of God. And as the Word of God, they have the power to heal you. The Bible says in Psalms 107:20, He sent forth His Word and healed them. The power of the Word has the supernatural anointing to bring the healing presence of Jesus Christ into your life. The Bible says, have faith in God. Nothing is impossible to those that believe. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So today I want you to hear this confession and I want you to learn to speak it because in the speaking of the word of God, you release the electrifying power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave. This is the confession. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess your word concerning healing. As I do this, I believe and say that your word will not return void, but will accomplish what it says it will accomplish. Therefore, I believe in the name of Jesus that I am being healed as I hear the word of God. It is written in your word that Jesus Christ himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Therefore, with great boldness and confidence, I say on the authority of the written word of God that I am redeemed from the curse of sickness and I refuse to tolerate its symptoms. Satan, I speak to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I say that your powers and principalities, your spirits that rule the present darkness and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places are bound from operating against me in any way. I am the property of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a child of God and I give you no place in me. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. I abide, I remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. His power is in me and no foe can withstand me. Now, Father, because I reverence and worship you, I have the assurance of your word that the angel of the Lord encamps round about me and delivers me from every evil work. No evil shall befall me. No plague nor calamity shall come near my dwelling. I confess the word of God abides in me and delivers me the perfect soundness of mind and wholesome in body and spirit from the deepest parts of my nature in my immortal spirit, even to the joints and marrow of my bones. That word of God is medication and life to my flesh. For the law of the spirit of life operates in me and makes me free from the law of sin and death. I have on the whole armor of God, and the shield of faith protects me from all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Jesus is my high priest, and he is hearing my confession right now. And I hold fast to this confession of faith through the word of God. I stand immovable and fixed in full assurance that I have health and healing in the name of Jesus Christ that my healing has been purchased through the blood of Jesus Christ, and that as I hear these healing scriptures, the anointing power of the Lord is being released into my body. The anointing power of Jesus Christ is attacking my disease, and I am now being healed. The Word of God says in Luke 17, 12 through 14, as Jesus was going into a village, Ten men that had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Listen to that phrase. And as they went, they were cleansed. In other words, their going was a testimonial of their faith. They had to take action to prove their faith. As they went, they were cleansed. And had they not started taking steps toward the high priest, they would not have been cleansed. 
But as they went, they were cleansed. Acts 3, 2 and 8 says, Now a crippled man from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg those going into the temple courts. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I it unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising the Lord. Here is another illustration of where God asks you to take action with your faith. Silver and gold have I not, but they took him by the right hand, and he stood up and began to walk. Then Acts 9, 32 and 34 says, As Peter traveled about the country, he went to visit the saints at Lydda, there he found a man named Arnius, a paralytic who had been bedridden for eight years. Arnius, Peter said unto him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and take care of your mat. And immediately Arnius got up. He had to put action to his faith. Don't be afraid to act upon your faith. Matthew 20, 30 through 34 says, two blind men were sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. But they shouted all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, they answer, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately they received their sight and followed him. But the point is they had faith enough to cry out for it. They had faith enough to be willing to embarrass themselves publicly to receive what Jesus Christ had for them. Acts 14, 8 through 10. In Lystria there sat a man crippled in his feet who was lame from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. He took action. Matthew 8, 14 through 16. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law laying in bed with a fever. Jesus touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word, and he healed all of the sick. Peter's mother-in-law immediately got up and went to work in her house. She demonstrated the faith that she had that God had healed her instantly by taking action. Matthew 8, 5 through 10 and 13. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And I say to that one, come, and he comes. And I say to my servants, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Jesus said to the centurion, go, and it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. The centurion had the faith to believe that Jesus Christ could heal even though the centurion's servant was not there. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. 
That's a very powerful verse, especially when you've come home from the doctor and he tells you you have a dreaded disease, or especially when you found out that the battle that you're in is almost impossible as far as human thinking is concerned. But here is Solomon writing, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Listen to that. The Word of God will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Isaiah 53, 5. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Listen to that. And by his stripes we are healed right now. He was pierced for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. Jesus Christ has paid for your healing. The price has been paid for your healing. Accept what Christ has done at the cross. Matthew 14, 35 and 36. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. Listen to that. And all who touched him were healed. They took action on their faith and reached out and touched the hem of his garment. Psalms 103, 1 through 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all of your diseases. Listen to those benefits. He forgives all your sin and heals all of your diseases. Many times the reason people are not healed of their diseases is that they do not confess the sin in their life. But there's a direct parallel between confessing your sin and being spiritually clean and then Jesus healing you. If at this very moment the Holy Spirit is bringing to you things that you need to confess in your own life, especially people that you need to forgive who may have hurt you, do it. Because refusing to forgive another will keep you from getting your healing. Matthew 4, 23, 24. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in all their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Jesus Christ was a healer of every kind of known sickness, and he can heal you of the sickness that you have. Matthew 8, 2 and 3, a man with leprosy came and knelt down before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man and said, I am willing be clean. And immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Let me tell you, God is always willing to heal you. Have faith in God. Have faith in the healing scriptures that have the power to conquer the disease in your body. Romans 8, 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is in you, This is speaking of the Holy Spirit. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who lives in you. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, that Holy Spirit can quicken your mortal body and give to you healing right now. John 5, 2 through 9. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of diseased people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in that condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? 
Now that's a good question. Do you want to get well? Sometimes people don't want to get well because when they're sick, they get lots of attention that they wouldn't ordinarily get. Look into the depth of your soul and ask yourself that question. Do I really want to get well? And if you do, claim your healing right now in Jesus' name. Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes on ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Pick up your bed and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. He took action and he was healed. Luke 13, 10 through 13. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. This is an evil spirit. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and she praised God. She was delivered from an evil spirit that was making her sick. Luke 4, 18 through 19. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Let me say to you, this is your year of Jubilee. This is your year to proclaim God's favor. This is your year to claim God's healing for your body. Do it by faith in Jesus' name. Isaiah 58, 6. Is not this the kind of fast that I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke? And then I like this verse, 3 John 1 and 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Now listen to that. I wish above all things that you may prosper, that means financially, and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. There's a direct relationship between the prosperity of your soul, meaning your spiritual condition, and your good health. And I'm asking the Lord tonight to give you a supernatural healing. Matthew 9, 27 through 30. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, saying, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and Jesus asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they replied, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, will it be done to you? And their sight was restored. Listen to the phrase. And according to their faith, it shall be done unto you. And their sight was restored. I say to you again, have faith in God. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. All healing comes by faith. And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And you're hearing the Word of God. It is the supernaturally energized force of heaven to heal your body now. Proverbs 4, 20 through 27. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those that find them, and health to a man's whole body. Listen to that. The Word of God is health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Do not swerve to the right or to the left and keep your feet from evil. Luke 8, 41 through 55. Then a man named Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus was on the way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. 
She came up behind him and touched the edge of his prayer shawl, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out of me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said unto her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue's ruler, saying, Your daughter is dead. Don't bother to teach anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid. Just believe. She will be healed. And when he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, James, and John, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her up by the right hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Mark 16, 17 through 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Listen to that phrase. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Not maybe, but they shall recover. James 5, 14 through 15. Is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. Do you see the connection again between the forgiveness of sin and healing? Deuteronomy 30, 19. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Listen to me. Many of you who are listening to this tape right now are given the opportunity of choosing between life and death. I don't care what your physician has said to you. I'm reading to you the words of God. Choose life. Choose life. Jeremiah 30, 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of all thy wounds, saith the Lord. Deuteronomy 7, 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee. That statement very clearly says that God controls all sickness and disease. For God said, I will put none of these evil diseases of Egypt upon the children of Israel. 1 Peter 2 and 24. He himself bore our sin in his body on the tree, so that he might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Exodus 15, 26. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your God that heals all of your diseases. Again, God is demonstrating in Scripture that he is the master of every disease. Luke 4, 40. All they that had any sick, with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them all. There's an illustration where Jesus Christ healed every person who came. Acts 10, 38. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Sickness is an oppression of the devil, and Christ has come. He has given his life at the cross and receive the stripes on his back that you might be healed. Luke 6, 19. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went out of his body virtue, and he healed them all. 
Psalms 107.20, He sent forth His Word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. He sent forth His Word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Psalms 30 and verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto Thee, and You have healed me. Matthew 8, 17. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and he carried our diseases away. Listen to that. He took our infirmities and he carried our diseases away. That's an expression of Christ as our scapegoat. When the high priest of Israel cast the sins and sicknesses upon the scapegoat, When the scapegoat was taken out and it died, the sin and sickness of Israel died with it. When Christ was on the cross, God our high priest took your sin and sickness and your infirmities and he put them on Christ. And when Christ died, he took our infirmities and he carried our diseases away. Jeremiah 33, 6. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to you. I will heal my people and I will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. Matthew 15 and 30, great crowds came to Jesus bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at Jesus' feet. And listen to these words, and Jesus healed them all. Psalms 1830, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. Psalms 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your word and your spirit, they comfort me. Listen to that. Your word and your spirit, they comfort me. Psalms 25, 3. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Psalms 34, 17, the righteous cries out and the Lord hears them and he delivers them from all of their trouble. Right now, right where you are, just whisper his name and say, Lord, heal me, heal me, heal me. Psalms 55, 22, cast all of your cares upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Listen. He will never let the righteous fall. Psalms 57, 1. Have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me. For in you my soul takes refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed by. Psalms 86, 7. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon the Lord, for you will answer me. Psalms 91, 3. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from deadly pestilence. There's no doubt. Surely he will deliver you. Psalms 91, 5 through 8. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that strikes in darkness, nor the plague that destroys at noonday. A thousand may fall at your left side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Psalms 112.7 He will have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. That's a verse of scripture you need to have in your mind right after the doctor leaves your room. He will have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Psalms 116, 8 and 9. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Psalms 119, 50. My comfort in my suffering is this, your promise preserves my life. Listen to that, saints of God. Your promise, the promise of God, the word of God, preserves my life. Psalms 119.17 Sustain me according to your promise and I will live. Romans 8.13 For if you live according to your sinful nature, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, 
You put to death the misdeeds of the body and you will live, saith the Lord. Matthew 21, 22. In all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, in faith believing, you shall receive. In all things, your healing, whatever the disease, whatever the sickness, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, in faith believing, you shall receive. 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome the world, because greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is substance. It's substance of things hoped for. When a Christian hears the word hope, it's not like the people of the world. The people of the world hear hope, and it's something like a rabbit's foot. But hope for the believer is this. Hope is the assurance that I have that God is going to perform based upon the scripture of what he has done in the past. Therefore, I don't hope God answers prayer. I know God answers prayer. I don't hope God heals. I know God heals. So now listen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto them, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Psalms 118 and verse 8, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Matthew 13, 58, And he did not many great works there, because of their unbelief. Psalms 91, 9 through 11. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no evil shall befall you, nor any plague or calamity shall come near your home. For he has given his angels charge over you to defend you and preserve you in all your ways. Psalms 118, 17. I shall not die, but I shall live, and I will proclaim what the Lord has done. Say that with me. I shall not die but live, and I will proclaim what the Lord has done. Psalms 91, 14 through 16. Because he loves me, saith the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalms 107, 20. He sent forth his word and healed them. Luke 1, 38. Be it unto me according to thy word. Acts 10, 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Ephesians 3.20 Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Listen to that. According to the power that worketh within us. What is that power? It's the power of faith. John 10.10 10, The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Luke 11.9-13 through 13. So I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For every one who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, when your son asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? Or if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father which is in heaven give the Holy Spirit and healing to those who ask Him? Mark eleven twenty two through 24. Have faith in God, Jesus said. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will happen, it shall be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believe that you receive it, and it shall be yours. Mark 10, 27. 
Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God nothing is impossible. Proverbs 7, 1 through 3. My son, keep my words and store my commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers and write them on the tablets of your heart. Romans 12, 11 through 12. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor seeking the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and beautiful future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart, and I shall be found of you, says the Lord. Jeremiah 1, 12. The Lord said unto me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Listen to that. God is watching to see that his word is fulfilled in your life. Isaiah 57, 18. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will guide him and restore comfort to him. Isaiah 54, 13 through 17. All your sons will be taught by the Lord, and great will be your children's peace. In righteousness you shall be established. Tyranny will be far from you. You will have nothing to fear. Terror shall be far removed from you. It shall not come near you. If anyone does attack you, it will not be my doing. Whoever attacks you will surrender to you. See, it is I who created the blacksmith who fans the coals into flame and forges the weapon that is fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to work havoc. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you shall be judged of God. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is your vindication from me. Think about that. God says when your enemies come against you, He has them in absolute control. Isaiah 45, 22 through 23. Turn to me and be saved, all of you from the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn. My mouth has uttered in all my integrity a word that will never be revoked. Before me, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that I am the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Proverbs 4.10 Listen, my son, accept what I say and the years of your life shall be many. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Psalms 145, 13. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to his promises and loving toward all he has made. 1 John 5:18. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm him. The evil one cannot harm you. 1 John 5, 4. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. 1 John 3, 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Psalms 30 and 5. For his anger endured but for a moment. In his favor is life. Listen to that. In his favor is life. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Exodus 23, 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Romans 2, 11. 
for there is no respect of persons with God. Many of you listening to this right now are saying, will God heal me? Yes, God will heal you. For God loves you as much as any person on this planet, and he wants you to be healed. Reach out in faith and touch the hem of his garment. For God is no respecter of persons. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Listen to that. For he who promised is faithful. Isaiah 43 and 5. Do not be afraid, for I am with you, saith the Lord. Isaiah 49 and 23. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will never be disappointed. Those who hope in me will never be disappointed. Isaiah 43, 1 through 2. But now, this is what the Lord says. The Lord who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and the flames will not set you ablaze. Isaiah 41, 11 through 14. All who rage against you will surely be put to shame and disgrace. Those who oppose you will be as nothing, and they shall perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not be afraid. I will help you. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. For I myself will help you, declares the Lord. Isaiah 7 and 9. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Listen to that. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Have faith in God. Tenaciously claim your healing. Isaiah 46 and 4. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am He. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you, and I will carry you. I will sustain you, and I will rescue you, saith the Lord. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I will sustain you and rescue you, says the Lord. Psalms 119, 92, and 93. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. David is saying, by the words of God, my life has been spared. Psalms 118, 6 through 7. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is with me, he is my helper. I will look in triumph upon my enemies. Psalms 37, 3 through 8. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastures. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn. The justice of your cause shall shine like the sun at noonday. He shall be before you and he shall wait patiently for you. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. The Lord is saying, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm right beside you, and everything's going to be okay. Isaiah 49, 25. But this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors, and the plunderer retrieved from the fierce. I will contend with those who contend with you, and your children will I save. I will contend with those who contend with you, and your children will I save. Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return, Without watering the earth and making it to bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, 
so my word that goes from my mouth shall not return to me void. Listen to that. Just as the rain and the snow falls to the earth and causes the flowers to blossom, God says, so my word that comes out of my mouth shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. These healing verses have the purpose of releasing the healing power. And God says his word never returns void. 1 Peter 3 and 10. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. Matthew 16, 19. I will give to you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Proverbs 12, 18. The tongue of the wise brings healing. Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Proverbs 13 and 3. He who guards his lips guards his life. Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. Listen to that. Nothing in between the power of life and death. Be careful what you say. And when you speak, speak life. Speak faith. John 17, 17. Sanctify them by thy truth, for your word is truth. Psalms 141, 3. Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. James 4 and 7. Submit yourselves unto the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And that's what we're doing right now with these healing scriptures. We're resisting the powers of darkness. And we're releasing the healing virtue of Jesus Christ into your body. Luke 10, 19. Behold. I give you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the tricks of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. With the word of God, we're making a stand right now, that in faith you're receiving your healing. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Right now, through the scripture, we're taking captive every thought in your mind. And we're saying through the word, which releases the healing power, Jesus has paid for your healing. Jesus Christ by his stripes, releases now the supernatural, life-giving, healing force into your whole being. Receive it, confess it, and take action in faith and be healed in Jesus' name.